This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by MeUndies. With a variety of prints and sizes, however you want to be you, we got you covered. Ladies and gentlemen, behold the outcast, the creepy and depraved, the bizarre creations not meant for the normal world. Embrace the twisted weirdness of Freak Show Cinema! I thought I saw every weird, surreal, twisted flick the 80s and 90s conjured up, as I craved them the same way Oreos craves pointless flavors. But somehow 1993's Freaked completely missed my radar. I guarantee you, if I saw the trailer to this as a kid, I'd have the ticket to the midnight screening already in my hand. I mean, look at this! These are some of the most bizarre, imaginative, freaky visuals I've seen in anything. And again, I consider myself a connoisseur of cinematic madness. Now my assumption when I first saw this trailer only a year ago is, it must have been really bad. Because well, I've never heard of it, and there must have been a good reason. But this is not only one of the craziest movies I've ever seen, it's also one of the funniest. Directed by Alex Winter of Bill and Ted fame and Tom Stern of, well, stuff a guy who directed this would be known for. They combined the visuals of Brazil, the story of Nothing But Trouble, the cast of Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, and the comedy of UHF to amount to something not really deep or meaningful, but unforgettably funny as hell. If you're wondering why you haven't heard of it like I have over the years, we'll get to that in a bit. But for now, let's look at what this movie is even about. Alex Winter plays a former child star named Ricky Coogan, who's being interviewed on a talk show hosted by Brooke Shields. It looks like he's gonna explain how he became this strange silhouetted creation without giving away the punchline. Let's just say it's one of the most nonsensical forced perspective jokes ever. <laughs> Regardless, he does tell a story about how a company called EES books him to endorse a toxic fertilizer called Zygro 24 in South America. Sounds like a standard deal. He travels with his friend Ernie while shaking off a young fan named Stewie, who practically has his own film of misadventures on the side, <laughs> and lies to an environmentalist protester named Julie, played by Megan Ward, making her think they're on her side. They stumble across a sort of freak show theme park run by Randy Quaid, and big surprise, his intentions are not that innocent. He's using Psycho 24! Hey, you're not supposed to have that stuff! Well, then I guess I'm not supposed to have these either! <laughs> He transforms them into his own brand of distorted insanity and throws them in with the other freaks he kidnapped and transformed. They include a sock puppet man voiced by Bobcat Goldthwait. Watch out, Hulkster! He's gonna try the Skull Tracker! A dog boy played by Bill and Ted co-star Keanu Reeves. Welcome to hell, Rick. Shake. A literal cowboy played by John Hawks. Don't mean you're nuts or nothing. Heck, old nosy, why, he can smell the future. A giant worm, played by Derek McGrath. Thank you, worm. I don't know how to repay you for this. You could wet my ass. And the bearded lady, played by, naturally, Mr. T. Hey, this is me. I am woman. And I like me. If that casting alone doesn't win you over, you are in fact Hitler. From there, the story is both straightforward and anything but. It's mainly the collection of freaks trying to find a way to escape while the mad scientist puts them on display as well. Doesn't sound like anything too crazy, but the weird as hell humor and unpredictable surprises they come across are what makes it consistently hilarious. For example, everyone tells their story about how the mad scientist tricked them, cutting to black and white flashbacks showing what they used to be. Randomly at the end it shows a hammer, flashes back to when it used to be a wrench, and we conclude he was also a victim of the mad experiments. If the hammer talked, that would have been too much, but just tilting down to it and showing its story is an absolute perfect laugh. I referenced earlier the humor being very similar to UHF, a very lighthearted and zany anything goes type of vibe. But I feel like another big influence must have been the Zuckers and Abrams team, the people that brought you Airplane and Hot Shots. If someone talks about putting together a home and it might remind you of Bob Vila, you just cut to Bob Vila. Later we're going to be caulking the ashram if you want to stop by. Thanks, Bob. They literally do the exact same joke, except it's someone pretending to be Bob Vila, and he's knocked out. Showing the film has a lower budget, but an even zanier type of humor. No problem, Elijah. It's all right here in my new book, Bedrooms and Bathrooms. In fact, if you take this one on 30... 
But one of the interesting things about it is that it does and doesn't look low budget. These creature effects are amazing. Apparently they had so little time before shooting started, they had to go to three different makeup companies to pull this off. That might be why it looks like the effects gel perfectly together and not at all at the same time. The clash of different styles coming together to form something new is part of what makes it so amazing to look at. I can't imagine poor Alex Winter getting up in the morning for hours of makeup, memorizing his lines, and directing a film all in the same day. I know Tom Stern directed too, which must have been a huge lifesaver, but he can't even use half his mouth most of the time. No doubt a lot of his lines had to be voiceover, but imagine giving direction like that and still having the amount of energy and craziness the film has. And as the movie goes on, the effects only get more and more insane. With even more sideshow attractions being discovered, Ricky being given the full treatment instead of just half his face, and the little boy Stewie from earlier being transformed into... One of the greatest things ever filmed by humans. Your ass is mine, Scott! The whole film has an attitude of anything goes as long as it gets a laugh or wildly confuses you. In a lot of movies that have expensive but surreal looking visuals, there's usually some sort of grand commentary or emotional storytelling. This just wants to be fun and crazy because it's fun and crazy. I mean, look at the opening credits for God's sake, seizure warning. Okay, that's good. They know who they're playing to. People who want to trip balls and laugh their asses off while doing so. But also while being exceptionally creative. With that said, there can be some commentary in the movie whether the filmmakers are aware of it or not. Whenever the business execs have to vote on something, their hands are always attached to strings like puppets, agreeing blindly with whoever's in charge. You can easily connect that to the spinelessness of some corporations. Even Ricky's transformation from selfish top-of-the-world star to literal freak of nature offers an arc that's not super deep, but does carry some satire of celebrity lifestyle. I'm not saying this is symbolism along the lines of Animal Farm or anything, I'm just saying even a film intending to be mindless, if it goes far enough, can have some nuggets of solid knowledge as well. But that does raise the question, how did this film ever get made? And with a style this unique and expensive looking, why have so few people heard of it? I don't know. Give me a second. Okay, I think I got it. The film was originally conceived by Winter and Stern as a type of surreal horror film starring the band Butthole Surfers. I never thought this was a sentence I would say, but you didn't need butthole surfers to weird this up. Though no studio would take their film, they eventually developed a series for MTV called The Idiot Box, a sketch show that honestly is like shorter versions of the film. Don't miss The Idiot Box! Hey! 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 Oh! Watch The Idiot Box, folks, because Alex would have wanted it that way. It's not difficult to believe the same people worked on both of these. One of the show's writers, Tim Burns, reworked the script to make it more like... Well, the show they were currently working on, and it eventually got a bite at 20th Century Fox. The head of the studio at the time, Joe Roth, loved the idea and predicted it was going to be a big hit. So he gave them $12 million to direct the film. Which wasn't obscene, but was a little odd. Neither Winter nor Stern had directed a Hollywood movie before, and while there were some names in it, none of them were quite big enough to guarantee ticket sales. But Roth liked it so much, he issued a comic book, novelization, and even action figures to be released with it. I guess he just really had high hopes. Everything they wanted seemed to be coming true until one little snag occurred. The studio head of 20th Century Fox, Joe Roth, was fired, replaced by Peter Chernin. He apparently took one look at the script and said, Aw, oh, hell no. And gutted the film's post-production budget. This is another reason why practical effects can be so important because, well, a lot of what's amazing about the movie is on film. No CG had to be added later. Still, this meant a lot of post-effects had to be trimmed down or cut altogether. But thankfully, because of the film's mix of strange styles, they didn't take away from the experience at all. Some scenes looked a little odder than usual, but that was just part of the course at this point. To make things worse, though, the movie tested poorly, so Fox pulled the film from a nationwide release and cut its advertising budget, meaning there were no commercials or newspaper ads. This resulted in the film bombing hard, and it's no wonder, it sounds like it was targeted for assassination the second studio heads were switched. With pieces of shit like this getting ads and wide releases, this was the one you were too embarrassed to promote? 
Needless to say, most people didn't talk about this movie because most of us didn't even know it existed. Years later, the two directors would move on to direct a wide variety of projects, and many of them were quite good. It's ironic Freaked is about a former child star because Winter would actually direct a very good documentary about former child stars. Stern as well would take a retro path, directing several episodes of the hit show The Toys That Made Us, among other successful series. Freaked, however, would only seem to fade into the darkness of obscurity. For a little while. Despite DVDs and Blu-rays being incredibly difficult to come across, people are slowly discovering the hilarious madness of this film. In a time where anything can be watched anywhere, this is almost becoming a true cult hit because you really have to work in order to find it. It truly is one of those films where you have to go off of word of mouth and try your best to find some place that has it. Kinda like a treasure hunt. Well, I'll tell you right now, it's a treasure hunt that's worth it because Freaked is one of the wildest comedies I've ever seen. True, it's slowly but surely gaining more attention online, but I don't think that's enough. This is a film that deserves to be seen by more people for all the hard work, creativity, and laughs it possesses. Disney owns Fox now, why not take advantage of a gold mine that's waiting to be discovered and re-release it on Blu-ray? Or maybe even on Disney Plus? It's PG-13, it's the same rating as your pirate films. Or if that's not an option, maybe people could do midnight screenings of it. I can so easily see audiences laughing up a storm week after week. Or maybe it'll stay as it is, one of those films you have to save up for or pray someone has in their library. But I really feel like if this is a movie more people saw, you'd see folks dressing up like them at conventions, or making t-shirts of them, or quoting it constantly. Whatever fate has in store for this film, it deserves to be laughed at, studied, and admired for how batshit insane and laugh out loud hilarious it is. So if you do have a copy, share it with friends. Or if you don't, seek it out. It's not going to change your life by any means, but it is going to give you so many creative effects, wonderful designs, and howling moments of laughter. Whether it becomes a hit over time or stays a hilarious little in-joke, Freaked is a great film to discover if you're looking for anything beautifully unnatural. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it so you don't have to. This is me. I am woman. And I like me.